Good morning and welcome to our February Life Enrichment. This morning, our speaker is Jay Harvey Kane. He's going to talk to us about Kansas courthouses. Uh, Jay Harvey Kane grew up in rural McPherson County. Um, he moved to Andover. Sorry, I've got some feedback here. There we go. Grew up in McPherson County, moved to Andover where he taught physics and chemistry in the high school level and then moved, taught for Butler Community College and Wichita State University. Please welcome Jay Harvey Kane. Tricia, I can't share the screen yet. Try it now. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining in. I got interested in courthouses a long time ago and uh, somewhat in passing, I would stop and photograph them as I was going through a town that had a courthouse, but never got really serious about going and exploring the courthouse further in terms of uh, looking at the yards and going inside the courthouse and that developed uh, a little later. <clears throat> We're gonna start with Highway 36 in Northwest Kansas and go from west to east across uh, part of Highway 36 beginning in Cheyenne County. St. Francis is the county seat. Corner, uh, the corner stone shows the commissioners and the architects and the year that the courthouse was constructed. Most of the photographs we'll be looking at are mine, but I occasionally borrowed an image to uh, achieve a little further goal, such as showing who the actual architect was uh, for this courthouse, Thomas Williamson and son. And uh, he, uh, was the architect for not only for the Cheyenne County, but for Jackson County, Smith County, and Sheridan County. We will not be looking at those other courthouses. Maybe at another time, we'll look at some of those. And uh, Smith and Sheridan counties are two courthouses I have not photographed yet. Here's another view of the Cheyenne County Courthouse that I took in 1985. If you look at the car parked out front, uh, the photo is dated based on the car that's out there. Rollins County, another county farther east, the county seat is Atwood. And this is one that I photographed in passing. I didn't stop and go inside and look around or uh, take a photograph of the cornerstone. Decatur County in Oberlin. This one too is from 1985. Uh, look at the cars out front. Uh, they are uh, from farther, an era farther back. And notice all the window unit air conditioners. I presume by now uh, there's been central air installed and there's not as many window unit air conditioners, but I could be an error on this one. Norton County in uh, Norton. And this one you can see is situated on a courthouse square. It's a rather large looking imposing structure. Phillips County in Phillipsburg. Lock facing the street. View from a different angle and one of their pieces of uh, attraction out front is a piece of steel beam from the World Trade Center from the 9-11 uh, terrorist attack. Republic County in Belleville. This courthouse is facing west. Take a look at the flags. They are uh, aimed toward the south. It was a little bit of a chilly day. 
Wendy from the North. I did not go inside this courthouse. And a lot of towns have murals that uh, have a theme associated with the town. So I'm going to show you a few mural views. Belleville, the center of things shows where Hutchinson is and Wichita and Abilene and Cocker City. Belleville's just a little bit south of the Kansas Nebraska border. One last view before moving on to Washington County. In, um, in Washington is um, the Washington is the county seat of Washington County. Built in 1933. We're going to look inside the court uh, courtroom. On this one, we'll see, uh, look inside a few other courtrooms. If we were doing this uh, in where we were all in the same room, it would be neat to see a show of hands and who has served on jury duty at least once, if not two or three times. There's the jury box, and you can see it as a footrest for the jurors. Not all courtroom jury boxes have a footrest for the um, juror. And then the seats for the uh, people that are observing the court proceedings. And the Kansas seal is usually somewhere uh, behind the judge, either on the back of the chairs in this case, or it's on the woodwork behind the judge's bench. Um, in this case, they have the scales of justice on the woodwork behind the judge's bench. Closer look at the great seal of the state of Kansas. And a souvenir sign uh, in the floor on the uh, outside the courtroom. $5 fine for spitting or on uh, the floor or throwing a cigarette or cigar stuff. That sign dates back to a long time ago. Marshall County Museum in Marysville. The courthouse is in the uh, National Register of Historic Places. It was built in 1891. It is a museum site now, the actual courthouse for uh, the legal proceedings that go on in a courthouse or, or in a building adjacent to this uh, building. The view from the street, this uh, front of this courthouse faces to the north. Cornerstone laid uh, in July 23rd, 1891. Then there's an AL date, which is uh, an Anno Lucas date. Anno Lucas means year of light, and you add 4,000 to the year, and then you get the AL date. That's from a Masonic calendar. So instead of being laid in 1891, according to our Gregorian calendar, it was laid in 5,891, according to the Anno Lucas calendar. Marshall County Courthouse went to the National Register of Historic Places in 1874. Inside in the courtroom, looks like this. There's the jury box. Notice there's no footrest. And uh, the spectator seats the, uh, for the observers or like theater seats. And notice in the lower picture, the wire hoop that's there, that's a hat rack for gentlemen wanting to take their hats off, being polite indoors, they have a place to park their hat. You can see a hat uh, on display in the upper photo. This is from the uh, court proceedings area, looking back to the spectator area. Now we'll go to Interstate 70 and take a look at a few courthouses along Interstate 70, beginning at Goodland and proceeding to the east. 
Sherman County Courthouse. And when I saw this, it was early enough in the morning, not much was opened up, though we were able to go inside and look around a little bit in the uh, lobby area. Built in 1931. Out front, they have a, a pioneer sculpture observing the Sherman County Centennial in 1987. The little slogan or motto is they came to stay. Inside is a throw, which has the Sherman County Courthouse on it. At the upper right, it has some other important structures uh, for Goodland. The yellow arrow pointing to the courthouse on this throw. Thomas County in Colby, the next county east. Thomas County, uh, the courthouse architect was J.C. Holland and Son. We'll see that name again later on. Courthouse is constructed in 1906. There is a uh, sculpture out front of a pioneer woman holding a child. It's called Spirit of the Prairie uh, by Charlie Norton of Leota, Kansas. Leota is a county seat, and we'll uh, see the courthouse in Leota in a few moments. Inside, the woodwork, ornate woodwork. One time they went to great effort to uh, make things look quite nice and attractive. Inside the courtroom with the uh, legal uh, documents, uh, the, the uh, statute books in the back, instead of in a room adjacent to the courtroom. We'll see another courtroom where the statute books are in the courtroom. There's the jury box, complete with footrests. And there's inside looking out at the pioneer woman and down the street. And here's a mural that's in Colby, George Washington. Uh, he was a Mason. Uh, the Masons have some uh, various uh, sculpt um, murals in this town. Logan County in Oakley, a little farther east on um, Interstate 70. Oakley is on the edge of the county. Many county seat towns are in the center of the county. They were deliberately placed there in the founding days so that uh, somebody living in the county could take his horse and carriage and go to town, transact whatever business they needed to transact and get back to their homestead on the same day. The county seat of Logan County used to be in the center of the county, but it got moved in the early 1960s. Built in 1965, and notice the uh, Mason symbol at the top there, the D with the uh, architect tools. Sculpture with the coyote. It's on Logan County sandstone. The uh, plaque reads this native Logan County sandstone boulder is millions of years old, it was removed. May 1988 from outcroppings near Nickel Mine Spring on the Chalice Ranch Land, 12 miles southwest of Russell Springs. Russell Springs, by the way, is where the county seat used to be. It is dedicated to the enrichment of the historical heritage of Logan County. And speaking of Russell Springs, this is the old courthouse or former courthouse in Russell Springs. It is a museum site now. I took this picture in July. 2017 and it's a little bit blurry so um, I borrowed an image from a courthouse website to get a crisp review of this courthouse. There's uh, my wife inside the courthouse looking at the chamber that used to hold the vault. The vault was removed and uh, relocated to Oakley was an election held and Russell Springs and the rest of the county lost the election because most of the population was in Oakley. 
There's a courtroom in the uh, old courthouse. Notice the style of the chairs. And in the days before air conditioning, if they held court on a summer afternoon, it had to be real toasty in there because it certainly was the day my wife and I toured this courthouse. It is not air conditioned. So uh, you go through this museum, the several floors and take it as it is. Still in the courtroom, there's the uh, observer's chairs. Now to Trigo County in Waukini, farther east on Interstate 70. This courthouse is made of limestone. The roof is a, an upgrade from what was originally there. And there's an eagle on the over the courthouse entrance. It's a three-story courthouse. Did not go inside and look around in this one. I think this was on a weekend and the courthouse was closed anyway. And Highway 96, we'll look at Leota, Scott City, Ness City, and Great Bend. Leota is in Wichita County. Little trivia question for you, and I don't know the answer because I've not figured it out, but how many towns in Kansas are located uh, in a county that does not have the town names? For example, Wichita is not in Wichita County. Logan, the little town, is not in Logan County. Wilson, the town, is not in Wilson County. There's uh, three examples for you. And Douglas is not in Douglas County. There's another example. This was on a weekend day, and so could not not go inside and look around. Scott County, Scott City, with the uh, Romanesque pillars out front. This is a four-story building. The cornerstone laid by the American Legion in 1924. Inside the courtroom, and notice the wood, uh, it's fir wood and not uh, wood of um, another kind. I didn't mention the particular wood and the others. We did see some oak wood and we have, um, I think a little bit of oak and fir in this view. The jury box and the spectator seats, which resemble church pews. On the Ness County, Ness County is situated on a courthouse square. It's uh, right along Highway 96, clock facing the street. And then there's a sculpture of uh, Noah V.B. Ness, after whom Ness City and Ness County are named. He was uh, killed in a battle in the Civil War, but never lived in Kansas. One famous person that did live in Ness County for a while is George Washington Carver, and west of Ness City is a historical marker along the road about that. A little few closer views of the Ness County Courthouse, constructed in 1917. This is from the southwest, and um, up high on each side, is a mural, except for the clock on the south facing side, but on the west facing side is a little circular mural with sunflowers in it, the west side. 1917 over the doorpost. And on the north side is another mural. It has a prairie scene on it. And this is the east side with a prairie scene. I, didn't do a close-up of the mural on the north side. 
and the cornerstone with a lot of information on it. List of commissioners, the architect, J.C. Holland and Son. Uh, J.C. Holland uh, designed a number of courthouses in Kansas. This one's hard to read, but uh, there's the Mason sign there and the script. I should have had a stepladder with me to stand up and look at it eye to eye, as it were, instead of looking up at it. Inside uh, is a little museum, a uh, display of some old firearms and uh, various things that have been found in the prairie soil outside of Nest City. In the courtroom, Great Seal of the State of Kansas is on a circular wall mount. Jury box, three rows instead of two rows. The benches where the spectators can view the proceedings. The floor outside the courtroom and the waiting room benches or the waiting benches. The stairs and the uh, railing and the banisters for the stairs and the posts made of metal. Uh, the posts are made of metal instead of wood. And the stairs are hard marble. All right, Barton County, Great Bend. It's also situated on a courthouse square. And around the courthouse square, if you walk around it at the corners are quilt patterns. So there's one of them. There's two more, uh, each at, a, at its own corner. And there's two more. And there was one out front, but it had been taken out for some other stuff that had been placed. There. I don't have any interior views of the Barton County Courthouse, neither do I of Rice County. That's on my list to go back there sometime and get Rice County interior. This is situated on a courthouse square. This is my most recent view. This is from the Southwest looking toward the Northeast, a clock facing each direction and a civil war monument out on the Northeast corner. And there are flags on display on the north side. There's the American flag, a uh, Spanish flag, a, a Union Jack, a Kansas flag, and a French flag. The Spanish flag, the Union Jack, the French flag, and I've drawn a little blank on the other one. Those are all flags representing countries that at one time or another controlled the territory where Rice County now sits. Uh, Mexican flag, that's the one I missed first time around. So Mexican, French, Spanish, and the United States and the British Union Jack. And then there's a uh, geological survey benchmark out there too, at the corner. McPherson County, this uh, courthouse made of limestone. This is a time exposure view I did one night uh, many years ago when I was still using uh, slide film instead of doing digital photography. McPherson County Courthouse built in 1894. There's a clock tower and at McPherson County Courthouse, there is a bell that is sounded each at the top of each hour, which announces what time it is. I don't know if any of the courthouses in the state do that. I need to check on that. I think most of them do not, if any of them do, other than McPherson County. This is the east side, the front of it faces east. Built in 1894, it's a little harder to read because it's weathered over the years. And there's a statue of uh, General James Birdseye McPherson out uh, back. He was killed in a battle in the Civil War in, in the, Georgia, I think is where it took, his death took place. But McPherson, the town is named after McPherson, the general. 
I don't know how the general pronounced his name, if it was McPherson or McPherson. If you go to McPherson and say McPherson, the natives there may uh, threaten you. I did find out though, there is a McPherson County in Nebraska. I asked somebody who would know recently, is it pronounced McPherson or McPherson? And up in Nebraska, he said it was McPherson. Marion County, what next county east? This is the uh, front entrance on the west side, the uh, cornerstone. And notice that J.C. Holland and Squires were the architects. Squires was an architectural firm that joined up with J.C. Holland later in time. Interior view with the uh, ridge, uh, the stair railing and the banisters and the posts stairs itself, instead of being that hard marble uh, that's been carpeted over. This is looking down the stairs, and that's looking up the stairs, and also in the hallway, that uh, woodwork that's there. This is in the courtroom. The legal documents are along the wall in the courtroom. That's my grandson there in the judge's bench. I had him with me when I went and did some interior views and photography of this courthouse, and he also took pictures too. The jury box, spectator seats, the theater style seats. This is from the spectator area looking into the court area. From the jury box looking at the rest of the courtroom. And then one more uh, external view of the courthouse. Now the Harvey County Courthouse in Newton is on a courthouse square too. This courthouse is one of the more recent courthouses in the state, it was built in the 1960s. There's a historical marker um, out along the street about this. I'll take a few moments to read this to you. The first Harvey County Courthouse in this site was a three-story red brick structure in the modified Romanesque revival style, dominated by a tall clock tower. Yeah. Bedford Stone uh, highlighted the exterior with marble lining the interior. Architect uh, J.C. Holland and Squires of Topeka were the architects, there's that name again and Crosby and Sons of Kansas City, Missouri were the contractors. Groundbreaking was uh, June 20th, 1906 on September 11th, an elaborate ceremony was held for the laying of the cornerstone. The cost was $47,101 and the magnificent building was a testimonial to Little Harvey's progressiveness and spirit. Each office had a uh, fireplace, natural gas, electricity, and telephone. P.J. Golly presided over the first court session on November 6, 1907. In 1966, the building was raised. Its marble and stone can be seen on two local trail markers. This sign is in memory of the pioneer family of Ezra and Charlotte Brenine, early attorneys, and attorney C. Fred Ice and Mildred Brenine Ice. 1966 Cornerstone, and there's a 1906 Cornerstone from the earlier courthouse. And it lists the commissioners and uh, who the architect was and who the uh, contractor was. And then a, bra a bronze plaque out front too for the present courthouse. Butler County. This photo dates back uh, quite a few years because Butler County Courthouse now is well surrounded by large trees. There is a, a Statue of Liberty sculpture out front. We'll look at this uh, from several views. This is the west side of the Butler County Courthouse. This is from the northeast. 
looking up at the clock tower and Lady Justice is up there too, if you notice it toward the upper right. The cornerstone for the courthouse and the uh, Masons had a part in this again. That's why their symbol is there. 1908 courthouse, George Washburn and son were the architects. There's looking up at the clock tower. There's a weather vane up there too and Lady Justice. And there's a close up of her and the supports to keep her from toppling on over. Weather vane. And then there's the judicial center, which is more recently constructed. This is where the courtrooms are now, across the street from the old courthouse. Reno County. This is a 1931 courthouse. The architect for Reno County was, uh, I'll find it here in a little bit. Well, let me go back to this. Notice in the railing supports the H's that are there. Look down lower in the woodwork. H for Hutchinson, there you can see a little more clearly. This is in a mezzanine area. And then outside the courtroom, the waiting area, and there are murals on the wall. There's that mural of Coronado meeting with the Indians at that time. Pioneer view. Inside the courtroom, there's a mural in the courtroom and then some rather ornate woodwork too. Jump into Cowley County. I do not have much uh, for Cowley County. This courthouse is a little hard to photograph, but there is a view of it. I have not been inside this building yet. I hope to get in there someday. But one of their neat views from the uh, yard is a map of Cowley County with the townships on it. And it shows the rivers, the uh, Walnut River and the Arkansas River. The Walnut River flows into the Arkansas River at uh, Arkansas City. The Walnut River flows through Winfield. And then outside the courthouse is a quilt pattern uh, advertising the quilt trail. It's in Cali County and then there's a URL that you can go to when you're on the internet and look up things about Cali County. Greenwood County, uh, we've been looking at counties that are adjacent to Butler County uh, for the last several courthouses. Greenwood County is the next county east. It's a basically single level or bi-level courthouse. Replace the older original one. And uh, this courthouse was erected in 1956. There's a familiar contractor named Donlinger and Sons. They, that's a construction company that still exists out of Wichita. An old map inside. I did not go into courtroom in this courthouse, but there was on the map a view of the old courthouse. It was there briefly. And this map shows Greenwood County and the townships and the section numbers and the railroads. And this map dates back to uh, 1871. The scale is a uh, one inch equals two miles. Ace County Courthouse in Cottonwood Falls. This is the oldest one in Kansas. The historical marker out front, I won't take time to read it, but it tells, um, some things about the courthouse and uh, a little bit of history of Strong City with the uh, interurban horse car system they had between uh, Strong City and Cottonwood Falls, which were two towns two miles apart. Inside the courtroom, 
in this building. And uh, if you ever have opportunity to tour this courthouse, take time to do so because not only is the building interesting from the outside, it's interesting inside too, uh, just to walk the hallways and look at the woodwork, to look out the windows and to view the courtroom and to look at the jail cells that are behind the courtroom where they held prisoners that were, where trial was pending. I don't know if this was also part of the original jail or not, that piece I don't know. A couple of friends were with me uh, when I went through this courthouse uh, a few years back. And Lyon County in Emporia. This is probably the one of the newest courthouses in the state. I did not visit this courthouse. I was ready to go inside. It was on a Friday that I was here, but for some reason it was closed for their purposes. It was not a holiday. They had something else going on. So they had the interior of the courthouse closed. I only could look at it from the outside. But it's uh, for a recent courthouse, it's not particularly bland. Some of the uh, newer courthouses, personal opinion of mine, are a bit bland. The older courthouses are more interesting and fascinating to look at. And that is it. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much. Uh, really, really learned a lot. I enjoyed that architecture too. It was very nice. Um, if anybody has any questions, you're encouraged to type them in the chat. Um, give you a minute or so for that. So one of my questions is though the size of those buildings back you know, 1800s, late 1800s, they're building these buildings and they're so big. Why did they build them so big? Well, uh, probably multiple reasons. One, they had hoped that the town would get to be fairly large. A lot of them did not get to be that large. And they also wanted to showcase themselves. So one way to do that was with a courthouse on a courthouse square. Also, I'd like to see pictures of the construction underway for those old courthouses because they did not have the motorized equipment that we have today to put up tall structures. Yeah, pretty impressive when you think about it. All right, well, I'm not seeing any questions. Um, thank you, Jay Harvey Kane, for your presentation. Very interesting, very enjoyable and we will be back on March 2nd. Um, we have a speaker from Humanities Kansas coming. Um, watch your email. Thanks so much.